Okay, today guys, um, I'm, I've had a uh, cold ring out on the uh, Jeep, 1995 Jeep Wrangler, 2.5, four-cylinder. Um, had a cold, did the little self-diagnostic and a cold. It started running really bad. Um, it broke, um, started, it started bucking. Uh, the, um, it was obviously backfiring. It was doing a bunch of stuff. It was, something was wrong. And so I pulled over the side of the road and I ran the diagnostic test. And what it said was um, <clears throat> fuel sensor to computer relay, not correct. Um, so that is code 27. If you see your blinking lights, there's two of them. There's seven of them. Code 27 basically says that you need to check your fuel injector. So, um, so I ran a diagnostic and I didn't film it for some reason, but I took the tester and I went to each one of them and they are all running out of spec. Uh, the spec on the Jeep YJ 1995 is they should have 14.5 ohms at each one of them. Um, every one of them were running 18 ohms uh, on each of the first three, um, fuel injectors here one two three and on the fourth one it was running 2.3 uh, so obviously i'd also done some stuff on the side of the road just before i got the tester i'd pulled each one of the um, uh, leads to the the cables to um, the fuel injectors and on the first one the motor even ran worse it was down two cylinders basically um went to the second one it ran worse pulled the third one and i kept putting them back on i pulled the third one and it ran worse. And then I put it back on. I pulled the fourth one. No change whatsoever. I knew it was the fourth one or one far back. Um, so don't 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 fault me. Don't blow me up on here if I don't know which one's one and which one's four. But it's the one in the back. Uh, and then I came home. I, I nursed it on home. Put it down. Uh, ran the tester on each one of them. Like I say, they're out of spec because the first one, second one, third one all ran 18, 18.1. That is, you're supposed to be within two, plus or minus two, so or plus or minus one, so it would be two range, uh, 13.5 to 15.5. 18, 18, 18, somewhere 18, one, I can't remember, but the 2.3. Uh, so I knew I was going to have to change one. I thought maybe, because I, and I'm not a mechanic, I'm, I'm basically just play with my cheat. Uh, I got to thinking maybe the resistance had built up because they've gotten so old, these originals, um, that they built up to 18 and that's why, you know, that one burned out or that one finished and it was um, run 2.3. Now, I could be wrong. Somebody that knows that stuff would know better. Uh, but I thought I'm going to order some new ones and put in there, uh, supposedly, hopefully the ohms will be more like 14.5. Uh, maybe that'll do some other issues that I've had. I thought, I've always thought it was running a little rich. Um, but anyway, long story short, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to take these parts off here. Um, I may not, I, I have the parts ordered and so they will not be here till tomorrow. So I'm definitely not putting the new one on. Uh, and I may not pull the rail. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get everything out of the way. I thought I'd show that. So I'm going to get everything out of the way and we'll go from there. So basically, when you are unhooking this stuff, um, you want to get as much stuff out of the way as you can, but don't take off anything you don't have to. I was watching one video and, and they were taking off all sorts of stuff and I was like, why? And when you can do this, hopefully. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take off the uh, breather to the throttle body. I'm going to take it aside now. I've already loosened these up. They just have clamps. They kind of just force, opens them up. So now I've got my throttle body. I'm going to go ahead and put something in the throttle body uh, just so that um, uh, basically you don't get um, um, a bunch of trash in there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to remove the uh, throttle cable from the throttle body. And I'm going to take off two bolts here or yeah. Yeah, bolts. Uh, they are 10 millimeter and then one nut, which is also a 10 millimeter. This is going to be on a stud that the actual fuel rail is still on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a few other things. This is the um, a vacuum hose to the um, um, fuel um, regulator. 
uh, pressure regulator. So I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna push it over the side. Now I've taped everything that I'm gonna take off uh, so that I'll know that I've got to put it back on. I'm not, like I say, I'm not a mechanic that does this all the time. Um, I'm gonna remove this hose here from the uh, valve cover if I can. And I absolutely just broke that. So I'll have to fix that also as well. That's awesome. So I don't know if you've messed with these Jeeps, but it gets really hot in here. And I've had to fashion a fuel line hose to make that withstand that heat. Every The hose that they had on it just kept. I don't know if it got old, but I'll just have to put this back on. All right, so right, I got to remember. All right. Um, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook a sensor here. This, this sensor from this wire here gets in the way. Uh, so I'm going to go down underneath here and pull it loose. That's just a it's slide on top. It's not very hard to do. That gives me a little play. You see, I just released it. Um, and I pulled all the hoses out of the way. Now, the only thing that's really going to be in my way is going to be this uh, throttle cable. The first thing you need to do is unhook the throttle cable. So I'm going to try to zoom in. I don't know if I can right here to try one more all right so right here I uh, should but this is gonna mess everything up I know what it is anyway this cable hooks to the throttle body right here there is a clip that holds this on all you have to do is actually um, is it not focusing um, is pry that loose. It's very gentle pry, but if you pry that loose here, put a screwdriver and just pry it off, the cable comes right off. So if you can see that, uh, it just basically slides on there. All right, and then when you go, you'll push it back on. So anyway, I've hooked it, unhooked it from the throttle body. The cable is loose at this point. I'd want to come back, and um, I want to be able to take this loose. The mount for the cable has two 10 millimeter bolts in it, and then it's got a nut on a stud here that's on the fuel rail, so you'll have to remove it. Plus, it's in the way if you don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my Ten millimeter on here. All right, and I kept a little magnetic um, holder here so that it would um, not be in the way um, but take these two bolts loose it's, it's pretty self-explanatory I mean these things um, are easy to get to there's nothing in the way you've pulled everything you need to out of the way um, and then the next thing is you've got this nut that is on the fuel rail right at, at that angle this is a terrible job So I'm going to take that loose from the fuel rail and maybe I can set it back up without having really messed everything up. So when you're doing this, um, you want to, of course, like I say, I've marked everything that's going to be taken off, but you want to make sure you don't drop any of the nuts down, um, bolts or anything. Uh, there's a lot of open spaces in here. You lose stuff pretty easy in a Jeep. There's probably uh, nuts and bolts and tools from way back still in the bottom of this Jeep. Um, I found a um, wrench and, I, and I'd heard some rattling over time, some knocking. 
and it was a wrench that had fallen when I was doing a lift on here. It was in the skid plate, and it was just rattling around in this little pocket. And uh, so, I mean, that's that's over a year that it was in there. All right, so I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to remove that, pull it loose from its clip up here, and just move this out of the way. And so now, if you can see, I have a, a open all the way to the um, uh, fuel rail. There's nothing going to get in the way when I pull it. Uh, the next thing that I would do is you're going to remove, again, these 10 millimeters. There's another nut on these studs, but there's a sensor on the back one here. Uh, and you need to make sure you put that back. It's grounded out on that on that um, bolt. So when you do this, you need to remove it and remember to put that one back on here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to get these clips loose. Now, I'm not sure. I've never taken these, but um, some people have to have a special tool. These look like it's just pinch and pulls. Uh, I'm going to try that. But the very first thing you want to do is disconnect your battery cable um so that you won't have any any um, um power going to this uh anywhere in here and then you want to release the pressure on your valve now you could do this by actually starting your car and pulling your relay over there um and just letting it die and then that means there's no pressure no fuel pressure um you'd have to pull the correct relay for your uh, um, fuel pump but the bottom line is this is just a simple way you want some rags a small screwdriver and then you want to release it so i'm going to go over there and i'm going to change the um i'm going to take the battery off um i guess you need to see that uh, i'll probably get someone to show me how to edit this stuff but i'm going to remove the battery cable from it i've already loosened it up because i was working on this earlier i thought i'd make a video on how to take this stuff off Okay, so the battery's disconnected, and um, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna have a, uh, like I say, some towels, and a small screwdriver would be helpful. When you work on the fuel lines and stuff, you're going to have a lot of um, drips um, and things. You just need to make sure you have plenty of rags and that you're not going to be uh, having anything with a lot of um, any spark or fire or heat um, while you're doing this. You don't need to be smoking. If you're a smoker, uh, you might want to stop. I've seen a bunch of backyard uh, mechanics and they smoke all the time. I don't know how they kept from blowing themselves up, but anyway, I'm going to take the cap off somewhere where I won't lose it, and this is going to spray, so I, I just put the over it and then touch. And if you notice, the gas went right in there. There is now no pressure on my full fuel line. Make sure here. It's like a, it's like a tire valve. All right, so there's no pressure on it. So when I take this fuel rail left, there is still going to be fuel in there. There's still going to be fuel uh, going to this part. So you still want to keep your rags and kind of keep them close by. But we're going to try this together. I'm going to pinch this in and pull. And it came loose. <laughs> if you think I'm not surprised, um, you'd be wrong. I am highly surprised that that happened. Um... You know, I've heard it. I've heard everybody like, "Oh, you got to go get this special tool." I'm just pinching these two gray things, and then pulling back on the when it comes unlatched, just pulling back on the fuel line, and there it is. There are my two um, fuel lines, and again, this is to my fuel rail. All right. So at this point, I all I have to do is take off. It looks like one, two nuts and this thing will be ready to pull i have a feeling there's more than that but i'm not finding them yet so i guess we'll find out together but i'm gonna take my 10 millimeter if you can't see it there is one right here between one and two 
And is that a 10 millimeter? I can't, I can't guess anything. Give me just a second, guys. It may be some different size. Again, like I say, I've never done this before. Oh, it's a bigger, it's not 10 millimeter. Um, it looks like an half inch. Let's see what we got here. All right, so that's a 13 millimeter. So the bolt sticks out the stud, and you took a 10 millimeter off to pull the, the throttle cable off. Now you're gonna use a 13 to remove that bolt. And I'll have to switch back and forth because the first, the back one back here with that sensor on it still has the 10 millimeter on it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up, hopefully. And that's not gonna work. You know why, don't you? Let me go get a 13 millimeter and again, hopefully someone can cut this. Would be awesome. So we're gonna try this 13 millimeter deep socket. I'm not believing that actually. I found one. All right, so all right, so I'm taking that loose. And guys, this might be the worst video ever. <laughs> This is whole studs gonna come out, and um, make sure there's no sensors or anything on it. As you can see, there's your whole stud. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing in the back. Of course, I've got to switch out because it is a 10 millimeter. Um. Remember what I said about tools falling down the Jeep? There you go. That's how half of my tools got missing. All right. Try it again. So, again, there's a sensor. There's there's a cable on it. I'm, I'm assuming it's a sensor um, of some kind. But either way, it is on this stud, and you need to put it back there. Um, someone called it a sensor in one of the others. Of course, they were doing a 91, and there was some differences between that and... It's 95. Um, Now we'll switch over to the 13. All right, so we got to move, put that back on there. All right. We're going with the 13. Hopefully it is the same size. 
and this pulls the whole stud out. Again, it's it seems like it's straightforward. I don't see any other bolts. I know the 91, they, well, they said it was a YJ, and I, I thought they said it was a 91. They had like four or five bolts to pull out, it seemed like. Oh, I'm sweating out here. It's like 90 something degrees right now in Tennessee, so it's not a very pleasant time. Be out in your garage all right so there's the um the stud like i say um i don't know if it's super important to put that piece back on it but i'm gonna try to put everything back the way it was uh, but that is supposedly all the bolts that i can find now i just want to take and of course the camera Guys, pardon my filming. I'm trying to do the best I can, but this is not great. All right, so I'm going to take this fuel rail, and I'm just going to rock it and pull. Okay. Don't bend it. There we go. And so I have removed the injectors, and I shouldn't have done that. That's the one thing I was going to tell you. Do not turn it over, or you'll, you'll have all that fuel run out. Um, all over your vehicle, which I did. Um, so anyway, there's your fuel injectors. As you can see, these are kind of nasty. Um, I'm assuming that it's pretty simple to take these loose. There's a clip on it. I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here is a clip on each one of them. I'm hoping that's as simple as, again, all that fuel's running out all over my hands. Um, but I, I hope it's as simple as everybody was saying that you just pull it loose uh, with a little flat screwdriver. So um, I'm not actually, I'll take one of them loose just so we can see. Uh, hopefully this is in frame. There we go, the clip is gone. I have the clip off. Right. so the clip is off and then from what i understand it's just wiggle this and pull with pressure huh. ah, quite a bit of pressure all right and there you go i have removed uh, the first one in there and um um going to replace it out as i said this is the um this goes back to the original of this um these injectors um all in all the filter part there looks pretty clean and this was one that was running 18 i'm going to keep them if you're ever on the road and you've had something like i was on the road the other day um very easily with the tools i have i could have pulled this off put one of these old ones back on and got home a lot better. I was doing like 25 miles an hour while bucking down the road. Um, I was about, I was only about a mile and a half from home, but uh, it was a, it was a different trip. So again, this is not a hard job to do. If you have some simple tools, uh, you needed a, a 10 millimeter socket. You need a, a 13 millimeter socket. You need a flat screwdriver. You need a small flat screwdriver to release the pressure on here and pretty much everything else. Um, I used, um, well, I had some different uh, clamps to do. So I had, actually had to have a few other um, sizes out, but um, that's it. That's the end of it. So uh, I'm going to post this and, and please don't blow it up because it's so terrible filming. I'm not a film student. I'm not even a mechanic. I just, uh, I enjoy working on this thing or learning new stuff about it. And I thought, well, maybe it's easier. Maybe it isn't. Um, you, you, you can be the judge, but try not to slam that. I'm going to uh, uh, just set these back in the holes until I get the parts uh, so that there's nothing gets down in them um, on these. And, uh, and then tomorrow I may film, depending on how bad this one is, I may film uh, putting the um the new ones in but i'm just gonna keep it for from anything getting in there 
Uh, and that's it for this video. I hope that there's something to help you. Again, I'm, I do not do filming. Uh, and this is new to me. But there's so few things on the YJ out there. I feel like everything I can add has got to be something. Um, and um, y'all have a great day.